Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. It's Saturday, I worked about a half day, and I noticed my trailer is getting a little skip to it. And it's because of a tire that needs to be replaced. Um, I've known about it for like four or five weeks now, but it was kind of okay, and now it's not okay anymore because it's bouncing to the point where I'm actually noticing it. And also, the tread's almost gone off of that spot, that, you know, the bad spot in the tire. Um, what's going on is I've overloaded it multiple times, and the tread's actually separating and it's got a bubble in it. So every time the tire rotates, it slap, 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 if that makes sense. Anyways, this video is about how easy it is to replace a tire um, on a trailer. Anyways, this is my Harbor Freight tire changer. You're gonna need that. You're gonna need a bead blaster. You're gonna need um, like a valve stem removal tool. You're gonna need an air tool that stays on. This will kind of kind of help you seat the bead when you go to do that because it'll have air on all the time going into the tire. Um, you're gonna need some tire spoons, some soapy water, and you're, you're probably gonna need a tire to put back on if you take one off. That would make sense with it. But uh, let's get started. First thing, I'm, uh, oh, I got my buddy here. He came up and gave me a hug. He's got a little scratch on his nose because something happened. But my little buddy decided to come say hello to you. Say hello, YouTube, JJ. Say hello, YouTube. Okay, get down, buddy. We gotta change the tire. But um, first thing we're gonna do is just jack the jack. In this case, a trailer up. And I'm gonna take the tire off. I'm gonna get it over here. And we're gonna break the bead. Then we're gonna get it up there. And we're gonna take the tire off. We're gonna put the new tire on. We're gonna reseat the bead. And we're gonna pump it up. Make sure it holds air. It's that simple. Let's get started. So the first thing we got to do is break the bead. In order to do that, we have to get all the air out of the tire. And that's where this uh, valve stem removal tool works or comes in. You just take your cap off and then you slowly unscrew this and you want to keep the valve stem, the core that you take out. So when you start to loosen it, that thing's going to blow out because of the air pressure inside. So you just want to kind of use your hand and catch it and keep it with you. I'll kind of show you right here what I'm talking about. You're gonna hear a lot of air in a second. And this is what it looks like inside of the tire and you unscrew it and it comes out and it blows out. Just catch it with your hand. Set it on the table, keep it clean, whatever you do. I'll let all the air get out of it and then I'll pop the beads. Now that we've got the air out of the tire, I'm gonna put it in here and pop the beads right quick. This is honestly kind of the worst part of it. Um, I always spray a lot of soap on this, or not soap, but get some water, fill this up with water and put a little bit of this detergent in there to get soapy water, shake it up real good, mix it. Soapy water, not soap. But um, I always spray this around the tire to get it, you know, kind of lubricated and slick so everything comes off a little easier. I have found the first few times I did this, well, I learned the first time actually. First time I did this, I didn't use soap, and it was a, oh, it was hard. It was hard to get the tire off. But uh, you spray soap on it, it makes it a heck of a lot easier, especially when you're sliding the tool around and everything, so. Use soapy water. And the reason it's nice to have an extra set of spoons, like tire spoons, is because right now, as I'm going around, the, the tire is actually rotating with me, but you can jam one of these in there and it'll stop it from rotating. I wanna show you guys something. Um, you see how, you know, the inside's wet, obviously, because I sprayed water and whatever in it. But you see how everything is good and smooth? Keep rotating. I actually I need to rotate this way because the bubble's on this side. But you see that huge bubble right there? I hope you can see it. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it good enough. That bubble right there is the spot 
right here where our tread was messed up. So just wanted to kind of show you guys what to look for and stuff like that. But what was happening is that thing, the inside of that tread actually separated and eventually it was going to start leaking. Normally they don't blow like this. I'm not like a tire expert, but from my experience, they don't blow like this. They just start leaking because the tread actually wears through the rubber. But let's get the new tire on the rim and get it aired up. We'll be ready to go. And the next thing I want to kind of mention is you want your wheel to be as clean as possible. I just sprayed some of that soapy water on it and I let it soak for a minute and I wiped it off. It's still kind of wet, so I'm going to wipe over it again. But you just want to make sure that's really clean. You also want to make sure your tire is clean. Um, I keep my tires in my shop so they get dust and all that type of stuff all in them. So I just blew it out really well, made sure, you know, nothing was floating around in there. Um, it's really important for the bead, though, to have this clean. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe over that again. Then we'll put the tire on. See, mostly all we have now is just some, you know, just like road trash or something, or tire trash. I don't know what you'd call that stuff, but all I know is that's completely acceptable if that's all that's on your wheel. Let's get this thing mounted. And sorry, I keep talking. I just want to make sure you guys know what the heck's going on. Um, spray soapy water all over your new tire where the bead's going to be sitting at because you saw how easy that thing came off all ago. It's going to be just as hard to get it back on if you don't have soap all over the tire. Or soapy water. I keep saying soaps. You get it. You get it. Okay, let's put the thing on. Also, getting the tire back on can kind of be more of a pain in the butt than getting it off. Um, these tires have a really, um, a lot thicker sidewall lip than the other tires did. So they're not really fitting the tool too good. Um, doesn't matter, we'll still get it on. Not really worried about it. It's just gonna take a little bit more effort. So let's get going with that. Man, y'all are making me sweat today. Uh, it wasn't so bad. Like you saw me doing, if, if you ever get kind of stuck up or hung up, just manhandle the thing. It'll slide on eventually. Um, especially once you get to that midpoint, the tire's kind of stretching out, and you're going to have to put some force into it to get it worked over that bead. Anyways, um, next step is to, uh, I'm going to spray soapy water all the way around the bead on the bottom and the top of the tire. And we're going to put our valve stem core back in. We're going to hook our continuous air up to it. So we got air continuously blown in and we're going to get our bead seeder, put it, you know, somewhere right in here, blow the air in there and hopefully it'll take. Um, another thing I want to mention right after you got the tire kind of mounted on, you just want to make sure nothing's kinked up and everything's where it should be. Um, as long as nothing's kinked up and the tire kind of slides around free, you're good to go. So we got the tire mounted first try. That's pretty cool because normally it takes a time or two. Um, now, I, you can research this. I always pump my tires up to whatever they're supposed to be. Like these tires, I run those at 80 PSI. Um, you can read a lot of different stuff about this. Some people say to run it six, or pump it up halfway and wait a little while and then pump it up. I don't know. I always pump it up full because I, back when I used to take my tires places, I would always watch the guys and they would always pump it up to the full load and then send you on your way. They don't do all that pumping up halfway and waiting and all that type of stuff. Anyways, tires mounted. You know, obviously we got our valve stem back in. I pumped it up to 80 PSI. What I'm gonna do now is, guess what? More soapy water. I'm gonna spray more soapy water around the base like this. Make sure we don't see any bubbles, which we shouldn't. Cause this thing popped on pretty good. You probably heard it. If I leave that part in the video, I probably will. Cause it's kind of give you an idea of what to look for. But no bubbles on this side. And then I'll just flip the tire over 
and do the same thing for the other side and i might wait a few minutes just to check the air pressure you know to make sure it stays what it's supposed to be before i deal with mounting it on the trailer and all that Wasn't so bad, was it, guys? Um, it took me maybe 25, 30 minutes, and that's with me stopping and talking and start, stop, start, stop, you know, with the camera and all this type of stuff. So, But I'm completely finished with it. Um, forgot to mention, you want to torque your tires to whatever the manufacturer says to torque them to. Um, for that trailer, it's between like 100 and 120. I torqued them 110 because when I go back around, it tightens up a little bit. So it's probably around, it's over 110, and it's probably below 120. Um, just make sure you torque your wheels right. And even after you've drove them for a while, you still want to go back and torque them again, make sure they're the right thing because the, the wheel can shift or whatever. And you don't want something coming loose. Uh, that'd be very dangerous. Um, anyways, may not be feasible for you to change your own tires um, if all you have is a car. You know, I mean, how often do you change the tires? But for me, in my case, it has saved my butt because I have had tires blow up driving home you know, to dump my trailer, driving home for the night, and then I need my trailer the next day, well, how much time does it save me if um, if I didn't have this tire change and stuff, and I'd have to leave my house and go find somebody that can change it real fast? Now, that long story short, it saves me a lot of downtime. And I can get my tires cheaper because I just order them online, and when they have sales, I can just get two or three and have them in my shop, um, which is kind of cool. So definitely worth it to me. May not be to you guys because I think they charge like 10 or 15 bucks to mount and balance the tire. I don't know. Anyways, got the tire changer at Harbor Freight. Got the um, the tire spoons and all those other stuff off of Amazon. I already had the air compressor and all that stuff. I think I made a video about that a long time ago. Couldn't have been a long time ago because I've only been on YouTube for six months or so. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys got something out of it. See you in the next one.